Join me as we make fragrant wash balls made out of herbs and white soap, inspired by recipes common from the 16th through 18th centuries. Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. I'm working at the Weald and Downland Living Museum this weekend, and this is my home for the duration. Tyndall's Cottage is an early 18th century house, and I'm going to be looking at quite a wide range of topics inside here today, but primarily health, hygiene, soap and cosmetics, although perhaps the people who lived here wouldn't have used so many of those. Yes, you're lovely, aren't you? The neighbours here are very friendly, these are little Southdown lambs, and come inside with me and I'll give you a quick tour of the house before we get started. Let's go up the stairs and I'll show you what's upstairs in this cottage. So we've got two rooms up here. They're quite simply furnished and probably a family with maybe five or six children could have lived in a house like this. Obviously fewer would have been more comfortable, but with a bit of topping and tailing in the bed and trundle beds on the floor and the babies in with the parents, not too bad at all. And actually with its windows and its good strong doors, this really isn't that uncomfortable a house. There's also a back room or scullery which has this rather wonderful copper in it. Now this could be used for several things. You could brew beer in it, but it's also, from my perspective, a really good place to be doing the laundry. Another couple of little rooms in here. What have we got? Uh, yes, storage pantry area. And another room. All in all, a very comfortable, modest family home. I'm set up in the main room of the cottage. And we're going to be looking at things like soap, soap ingredients, cosmetic ingredients. There's a real trend for making your own cosmetics in the 18th century. And whilst a few of the things on the table here would have been out of the reach of the sort of family that lived here, there are plenty that were available to even fairly middling sorts during this century. I'm raiding the gardens here for sage. Sage is really good in early toothpaste recipes. There's quite a few that recommend it and it's still quite a useful one today. One of the other things I've been looking at this weekend of this house is how people cleaned their teeth in the past. And we do know that an awful lot of people didn't have great dentition in the early modern period. But there are things you can do and there are some recipes that have stood the test of time very well. This is sage. You might have seen me picking it in the gardens earlier this morning. A sage leaf just torn off and rubbed on the teeth like a little flannel works amazingly just to clean off grime but you can go even better than that if you put into your pestle and mortar sage and salt this is just sea salt Let's see if i can get the lid up so just sea salt in there grind it to a powder what you get is tooth powder now this could be applied with a coarse cloth, you dip that in water, you dip it in the tooth powder, you rub your teeth, or you could use a frayed stick to help rub it in. And if you wanted to get really fancy about things, you could even make or buy little sticks. Now these are made of abrasive materials and a little bit of um, tooth polishing material and then they're stuck together with gum arabic and water they're often scented so sometimes these are cinnamon flavored and they're little scouring sticks they're quite brittle they snap quite easily and these are rubbed against your teeth and they will scour away all of that tartar probably not something we'd recommend today these were probably fine for a one-off use not great for repeated use for more gentle uses the quill of a bird's feather, so the sort of thing you'd use for writing with, can be cut down into a very gentle toothpick, get the bits out. And if you need a mouthwash, and here we have tincture of myrrh. This is strong wine with a little bit of myrrh resin. I've got some of that somewhere. There's some myrrh resin. A little bit of myrrh resin dissolved in it. Now, if I were to mix that with cold mint tea or cold rosemary tea, that makes a really quite effective mouthwash. Again, nothing too dramatic by today's standards. I wouldn't suggest you swap to these from your own current regime, but it is quite interesting to know that the people of the 16th through 18th centuries did have access to mouth care products if they chose to use them. 
and that's what it always comes down to. Today, the visitors are helping me make washballs. These appear in recipes from the 16th century onwards and are increasingly common by the time we get to the 18th century. And they can be really complicated. They can have ingredients like musk and civet and ambergris and even things like white lead. Or they can be very simple, like the ones that we're going to be making today. There are lots of these recipes written down here. Just as an example is one from Hugh Platt, Delights for Ladies. This one is 1609, so a good 100 years before the 18th century. And he says that you should take three ounces of orris, half an ounce of cypress, two ounces of calamus aromaticus, that's sweet flag root to you and I, one ounce of rose leaves, that's rose petals, two ounces of lavender flowers, beat these together in a mortar, that's what the children are going to be doing for me, for si sieving them through a fine sieve, and then scrape some Castile soap, dissolve it with some rose water, and incorporate all your powders by labouring them well in a mortar. Now the beating in a mortar bit is fantastic, you've got a huge mortar. If you haven't, just squidge them around with your hands until you essentially get soap play-doh. Here's an 18th century example. This one uses a fair mix of ingredients, but they include roses, lavender and a few cloves. Although we're working with a hard white soap, it certainly isn't the only type of soap available in the 18th century. One of the other sorts of soap that was much more widely available is soft soap. Now this has been made with a mixture of animal fat, beef tallow in this case, and also rapeseed oil, which is used very widely from the 16th century onwards for soap. And it's used wood ash lye to convert it into soap. It doesn't look very exciting like this, but it's brilliant for cleaning. It's gentle enough to wash your body with, fantastic for laundry, really good for washing things like floors, woodwork, the dishes. This really is a general purpose soap. And it's something that we can trace back in history at least to the Roman period, though we think it goes an awful lot further back than that. And you can still buy soft soap today. Into my pestle and mortar, I'm putting rose petals, lavender flowers, and just a very, very few cloves. Rose and lavender appear frequently in washable recipes right throughout the, the, the periods in which we find them. Cloves do appear fairly regularly but they're expensive, they're imported and if you use too many cloves they can be harsh on the skin. So we want something that's going to be very gentle on the skin, very safe for the visitors to handle, something that you could replicate at home but that is also in keeping with the ingredients of the day. This is about as simple as the recipe goes for this period. If you're doing this at home there are other things that you could substitute. I'll give you a little list later of some things that work very well and I'm hoping that all the children who visit today are going to make a lot of clanging noises for me and help me pound these to a really fine powder. with a knife is the way people would have done it years ago but if you're having a go at this at home use a grater it's much safer on your fingers but castile soap is a hard white soap made with salt rich rich ashes you could buy it but we're also making it in this country quite widely so you could buy it from peddlers you could buy it from apothecaries it would have been relatively expensive and making washballs is absolutely the best way to make it go as far as possible well, my little apprentices have been doing a great job. This is just a little sample of the beautiful fine powder that they've been producing for me. So this is roughly equal parts of rose petals and lavender, tiny, tiny sprinkling of clove, and it smells fantastic. Well, it's time to start assembling our soap. We're gonna put the powder that's been so nicely ground up into the soap shavings. If you want to try this at home, the important thing is to make sure you use really safe ingredients. Use a plain soap and you might want to use things like oatmeal or lavender or rose petals. You could even raid the herb teas and use things like a little peppermint tea or a little chamomile tea. Whatever you use, just make sure it's really safe. I'm going to mix this around. I think actually a little bit more powder can go into that until it's really well distributed. 
Having combined our powders, we need to stick them together. And in this bottle, I have some rose water. Orange flower water would be just as good. Both are very widely used at the time, but rose water seems to have been more widely available. You could make it at home by distilling fresh roses. You could also buy it from apothecaries and peddlers. This is a really good quality rose water. It smells lovely and rosy. And I'm just gonna use that sprinkled onto the washball mixture and then knead it with my hands. So we've got our soap and herb mixture here and it's now it's time to put the water in. The trick is not to overdo this. You want a little at a time. If you put in too much, you're essentially gonna end up with herb tea with soap in it. I learned that the hard way. Once your, your water's in, start mixing it together. It's a little bit like making pastry at first. What we're aiming for is a Play-Doh-like consistency. So get the herbs, the soap and the water together and add more as you need it until it really comes together. And that is starting to look quite good. Can you see how that's starting to leave the sides of the bowl? Think of it as being a bit like Play-Doh. That's really what we're aiming for. And once we've got it, to a nice smooth consistency, you can start modelling it into balls, although there's nothing to stop you making more modern shapes if you prefer. For 18th century wash balls though, get them as round as possible. So these are really squidgy and they're going to take a few days to dry out. When they're done, they're probably going to go slightly brown like these, that's just the colourations and the herbs leaching out. Once they're dry though, you can use them like you would any other hand soap and they make a really good kitchen sink soap, very nice and scrubby. As always, it's a massive privilege as well as a joy to be able to work somewhere like the Weald and Downland Living Museum. A huge thank you to all the staff, interpreters, conservators, volunteers and everybody who goes to making this a truly un unique place. That's it from me for now. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.